the Peace Channel. I'm your host, Troy Eagle. We're here at a cemetery called River View. It's just south of Aurora, Indiana. Now, this cemetery has a lot of history. And we're about to go and find out some of that history. And also visit the graves of people who are interred here. So join me on this little tour and pay our respects to those who went before us. I'll see you on the tour. This first stop is called Indian Mound. Of course, a new term we use now is Native American Mound. And we're going to come up to the top here and give a little talk about it. Indian Mound, located here, beginning of the cemetery, here at Riverview, it was reported that they found artifacts to have come from this site, which contains a midden, including axes, flints, pieces of stone tools, and a debitage from their manufacturer. This is 360 view of Indian Mound, or I'm going to call it Native American Mound. The second stop is the Lockery Master Site, or Soldier's Field, as it's also known. On August 23rd, 1781, Colonel Archibald Lockery and his band of Pennsylvania militia were attacked by a group of Indians on their way to rendezvous with George Rogers Clark at present-day Wheeling, West Virginia. Although the Indians were outnumbered, they had the advantage of surprise and superior firepower. Within minutes, approximately 40 of Lockery's men had been killed. Several others, including Lockery, were executed later. A marker in the cemetery overlooks the battle site and lists the men who took part. And that's the Lockery Massacre site. The next stop is just right up the hill from the Lockery Massacre site. This is Soldier's Circle. Soldier Circle is a monument that was dedicated on September 12, 1897 to honor the members of the Grand Army of the Republic, veterans of the Civil War. Veterans of all conflicts since the Civil War may be buried here as well. At the entryway, you may also examine the artillery piece on display from World War I. Services are conducted every Memorial Day by various veterans associations. To honor those who have served our country in times of war. And this is Sir Soldier's Circle. This is the boulder that was moved from Culp's Hill from the Battle of Gettysburg. Captain Alexander B. Pattinson, commander of Company A of the 7th Indiana Infantry, served throughout the entire Civil War. He created this stone for saving his life in the Battle of Gettysburg. Note the musket holes. This rock saved his life. Our next stop. This is called the Well House. This building was built in 1889 to house a boiler and a steam pump. Before city water was available, water was stored here for distribution throughout the cemetery. This is called the Well House. This is the chapel. The 
chapel was built for funeral services and to hold bodies when the ground was too frozen to dig a grave. It is now used only for storage. There's a nice looking monument there on the side. Alright, our next stop is the Aurora Sea Shook Grave. Honoring his wife's wish, Raymond Shook has Aurora buried in her 1976 red Cadillac convertible. The specially built vault measures 27 feet by 12 feet. It uses 14 lots. It must be right here. Alright. Nice way to be buried in your car. This is the Aurora Graveyard. The Aurora Graveyard was originally located on Cornwell Street in the vicinity of where the Aurora Casket Company Aurora plant now stands. The graves and markers were removed in 1886 to a more appropriate location in Riverview. It has also freed up valuable commercial property for expanding Aurora Industries. That's what was left of the original Aurora Cemetery. It was moved here in 1886. Next two stops are located right beside each other. All right, first one we're gonna talk about, this is Probst Cemetery, what's left of it. And this is the Buffington Cemetery. The Probst Cemetery and the Buffling Cemetery were moved in 1972 and 1973. 1972, 1973. Respectively to this location or to complete State Highway 350 West of Aurora. This is the site of their former cemeteries that are moved from there to here. On next up. This is the Holman Monument. Judge Jesse L. Holman, an attorney, attorney born in Danville, Kentucky, moved to Indiana in 1810 and built a log cabin for us two on a hill south of what is soon to be Aurora. In 1819, he laid out the city of Aurora and named the new town for the goddess of dawn. He was one of the original Supreme Court judges of the state of Indiana and was appointed by President Andrew Jackson as U.S. Judge for the District of Indiana. Judge Holman's son, William S. Holman, was a delegate to the Second Indiana Constitutional Convention and in 1858, he was elected to the U.S. House of Representatives where he served 16 terms. The watchdog of the treasury, as he was called, died in Washington in 1897. And that's the Holman Monument. This is the Shipper Monument. The tree stump monument and log headstones are peculiar to this family plot. Yeah, peculiar. They're all headstones. They're all made look like uh, logs. That's cool. Alright, this has been the Shipper Monument. This is the next stop, the Sutton Monuments. Dr. George Sutton started his medical practice in Aurora in 1836. He became quite renowned for his studies and papers on the diseases of the early frontier. The following medical problems are among the various that he wrote about. Enlarged prostate, trichinosis, erysipelas, malaria, the use of fulcrum to reset 
dislocated joints, and the importance of post-mortem examinations. He was best known for his experience study and papers on cholera. He served on the Board of Education of Aurora, was three times elected mayor, and was president of the first board of Riverview Cemetery. And this is the Sutton Monument. This is the Backman Monument. John J. Backman, who settled in Aurora in 1845, became the manager of the Gap Distilleries. He served on city council for 12 years, was on the original board of the Riverview Cemetery, was a stockholder in the First National Bank, and a member of the board of the Aurora Gas and Coke Company. His son, Colonel John J. Beckman II, a veteran of the Spanish-American War, started the Aurora Coffin Company, now the Aurora Casket Company. And this is the Backman Monument. This is the Catholic section of Riverview Cemetery. In 1875, an agreement was made with St. Mary Roman Catholic Church to preserve certain parts of Section L for their parishioners observe the segregation of German families and Irish families. Father John Lynch and Father John J. Mackey, former parish priests, are buried in front of the hand-chiseled granite crucifix. And this is the Catholic section of Riverview Cemetery. All right, our next monument. It's kind of small. I thought it was way down there by the road. Here it is. This is called the Dedication Book Monument. This monument recognizes the Riverview Cemetery for its perpetual care. And that's the Dedication Book Monument. There are elegant ladies of Riverview. First one is Faraclaw. This is the second elegant lady of Riverview Cemetery. Famer. Here's the next elegant lady of Riverview, Gibson. Our next elegant lady is Spidal. And this is the last elegant lady of Riverview. Langtree. Our last stop are the Guarding Lions. In front of the Gibson plot lie two lions. One sleeps while the other is awake guarding the plot. And that's the guarding lions. Ah, check this vault out. B.N. McHenry's family vault. That is an unusual vault. It's round. That's 1877. That is unique. I've seen a lot of them. That was definitely unique. Yeah. All right, I spot this next gravestone. It's really unique. It's got the word Miller written on it. That is a really unique tombstone. Shape of a shell. I like it. It sets you apart from the rest of the other gravestones. No unique grave that I kind of noticed. It's this one. Rick. It's a firefighter's grave. It's, it's a crying out for me. I am in a better place where the tears from the face, my pain and suffering, now are done. I am with the Father and His Holy Son. I will always be with you though not physically so don't think 
you got rid of me that easily. I will always be your son, your husband, your brother, your uncle, and your dad. So loved ones, don't be sad. I will be that gentle nudge, that inner voice. There is help you with that difficult choice. One more thing I think you should know. I'm with my dad and he says hello. Unique. I like it. This was Angel Garden. It's a place to put your ashes or inter them, I might as well say. That is a very unique monument. Look at that. Bangles. I like this one. Pretty unique monument. Very unique. Alright, look at this one. This is GC Steven or CC Stevens. It's Charles C. Stevens Mausoleum. It's pretty neat. I like it. This one. It's interesting. Notice the columns on it. Can't see inside, but we can try. Let's go look. Let's see what's inside. It's dark. All you can see is the light. Not changed, but glorified. Alright. And that's Stephen's monument. Hey, look at this monument. It's like a tree stump. Man. Oh, look over here though. Look at that monument. Backman Lion. That is unique. I like it. That's a pretty interesting tombstone monument. It's the family plot here. Backman. Backman. Uh, look at this monument. Oh, I'm sorry. Look at this mausoleum. This is a York mausoleum. That is unique, to say the least. Not much to see. There's no windows. But look at it. It's like it all the way around. Very unique mausoleum. Thank you for joining me on this cemetery tour of Riverview Cemetery here in Aurora, Indiana. And to everybody here, past, present, rest in peace. Troy McCormick, and I'll see you on our next Cemetery Tour video. For now, goodbye.